Hey guys, Maritza here. I just showered and took all my makeup off and just getting ready to, to go to bed. No earrings, no nothing, just just natural here. Um, I'm very, very happy with the whole process and progress that's taking place. Um, considering, you know, that I was in a decently high dose of testosterone for quite a long time and you know it's the body's adjusting very nicely <clears throat> considering that i've had sinus infections although i'm hearing a ton of people having the tiny sinus infection as well my good friend laura has just been um, going through i prayed for her yesterday during the show and and asked the group that i belong to x trans and x gay group that i belong to freedom march uh, to pray for her because you know she's not feeling well it's like i i think that the gadget that we're being forced to wear over our faces actually creates a lot of bacteria and will actually create sinus infection and probably lung infections and god knows what else um i don't know how long this is going to be that we're going to have to do these kind of things it's i don't know i don't know I um, I truly believe, though, that the world that we live in may never be the same. And it's all part of the course of the change that is taking place. It's biblical. It's very biblical. I was, um, I was reading one of my, um, I got two or three different Bible plans that I do. Um, devotionals I sometimes I do two in the morning and two in the evening depending um, they're very interesting because they guide me um, and they've been very helpful so there is one particular one from Matthew 13 41 through 43 Matthew is a lot of the red letters or a lot of the writings about Jesus or what Jesus said and most people think that Jesus is this really passive individual that just came to throw flower petals at our feet, you know, and <clears throat> he came to fulfill the law, not to abolish the law, number one. And here's uh, Matthew 13, 41 that I want to share with you guys. <clears throat> the son of man will send his angels and they will gather out of his kingdom all causes of sin and all lawbreakers pretty much sums up a lot of people in, in this day and age that are living for themselves that don't even realize that what they're doing is sin. Like I had this one transgender individual reach out to me asking me, where in the Bible does it say that being transgender is a sin? Just the whole concept of altering your body to be who you think you should be versus who you are, that in and of itself, I mean, it's all over the Bible. And it doesn't take a rocket scientist. Your own conscience, if you listen to it, will tell you. So, um, turn this off because it will continue to bother. Um, so, they will gather out of his kingdom all causes of sin and all lawbreakers and throw, throw them into the fiery furnace in that place there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth i think we all know what that place is and although a lot of people don't want to believe that that place exists jesus referred to it many of times then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their father he who has ears to ear he who has ears let him hear you know so many people just don't get it so jesus always talked in parables and he talked that way to get people to the people that he wanted to get his message would and those that didn't that goes over their head <clears throat> he talked about there's a parable about the seed <laughs> seeds um that certain seeds will get eaten by the birds and certain seeds will 
get blown by the wind and other seeds won't make it enough to grow roots. Only the ones that grow roots and are really firmed in the soil will yield some sort of outcome, right? So Matthew 13, 49 through 50 says, so it will be at the end of the age that the angels will come out and separate the evil from the righteous and throw them into the fiery furnace. And I, that's the same one that I read a little earlier. He answered, the one who sows the good seed is the son of man. The field is the world. Because in the parable, he's trying to explain this is Matthew 13, 37, 43. You know how he explained all the, about the ones the birds will eat, the ones that would scatter by the wind, the ones that would get stuck in the thorn and would not be able to grow. So they were trying to understand that parable. So he explained it further. The one who sows the good seed is the son of man. The field is the world. That's, you know, that's the uh, parable. And the good seed is the sons of the kingdom. The weeds are the sons of the evil one. You know, we're talking about dividing the weed from, from the, um, the actual harvest, right? From the actual wheat. The weed are the sons of the evil one. And the enemy who sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age. And the reapers are angels. Just as the weeds are gathered and burned with fire, so will it be at the end of the age. The son of man will send his angels and they will gather out the kingdom. It's the same. That was like the focus on this morning's devotional. And uh, they'll be thrown in that fire where teeth will be gnashing. And, you know, people don't want to believe. People just don't want to believe. And they just want to continue to live their lives materialistically driven. They think that you're here to totally just gather stuff, you know, and riches and, and material goods. And that's furthest from the truth, furthest from the truth. Uh, it's just so many wonderful biblical passage that indeed in their case, the prophecy of Messiah is fulfilled that says you will indeed hear but never understand and that's what happens to a lot of people they're hearing all this stuff but they don't understand and you will indeed see but never perceive for these people's heart have grown dull and with their ears they can barely hear and their eyes they have closed that's they they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears and understand with their heart and turn and I would heal them, but they don't want to be healed. They'd rather be of the world, living in the world, gathering materialistic goods, self-stimulating with the things that they do. This is a very interesting one, Philippians 2, 3, 4. Do nothing from selfish ambitions or conceit. What would you say the majority of people this day and age do? Everything's selfish ambition. They leave their families behind to chase their dreams. Forget about their family, forget about the loved ones. It's all about them. But in humility, count others more significant than yourselves. So even if you if you have something that pains you, and you weigh out, well, if I do what I want, how many people are going to suffer? If it's just you suffering, and it's best you suffer than not the entire group of individuals that you have taken down because of your your needs, your selfish ambitions. Let each of you look not only to his own interest, but also to the interests of others. Philippians 2, 3, 4. So right there, that's when people say, well, where is transgenderism against? Where, where does the Bible talk against that? Well, there's it's not per se because there wasn't such a thing back then. This is the modern disease that's taken over the world and identity crisis um, can compare it to the eunuchs. So totally different. It's like people trying to compare intersexual people with transgender, two different ideologies, two different things altogether. You can't compare them. So if you're doing something for your own selfish needs and you have not thought about those that you're hurting as you do it, then that's a sin. 
that's going against what God wants because you're following your own needs and forgetting the needs of others and the commitment you have made with others all to chase your fantasy. There's oh, just so many things. I wrote uh, something earlier today. Let's see here. I watched this movie on Prime the other day. I forgot the name of it, but it was in the just that there's this mother who was a scientist and her son had died, but she managed to take his consciousness and place it inside this other man who was nearly brain dead with this type of machinery. I mean, it was really sci-fi, but this morning when I was getting ready, doing my laser treatment and after that I had to shave, it was like a whole hour and a half worth of stuff that I had to do this morning. But I um, something dawned on me. You know, it's like being by myself, the Holy Spirit talks to me a lot and puts a lot of things in my mind, healing me and, and letting me grow. And so this is what I wrote on my Facebook regarding that. We are being led to slaughter. Our bodies are being taken over by dark spirits as we use technology, receive inoculations, and all of our information stored in a worldwide library throughout the use of social media. It's almost like these dark spirits are learning our behavior to almost like invasion of the body. And, you know, what happens to a lot of trans people? You know, they, they like inherit this other personality. I mean, you hear it. I've been reading a lot, these trans widows um, on Twitter their husbands changed from night and day. And it's just like a different person, like literally somebody else came in and took over. And you gotta wonder if that's what's happening with a lot of trans people. I know with myself, you know, it's like the character Mark, it's totally different, totally different the way that it, I think as Maritza, the way that character used to think. And now that I no longer have those influences, it's amazing. I mean, I, I I reflect a lot and it's like, wow. But I got very ill and that I was just very high fever and just having a lot of, you know, elimination and lost all that weight. It almost felt like something was being purged out of me, all this negative energy, all this stuff. And I tell you, I feel lighter, way lighter and way better. <clears throat> So Satan's taking over and creating a false world and we're none the wiser. And that's what's happening. He's creating his world, corrupting completely the world that our father has designed. And he had that plan from the very beginning when he approached Eve. And it's like, it's on steroids right now. It's super duper, duper duper, you know, um, massively. I mean, it's, it's crazy. It's totally crazy, but you know, people are not the wiser. They're so too busy collecting stuff, and you know, it's like you're not to be of this world. You know, you're not to be of this world. You're to have his identity, not gather your own, not allow your ego to take over. You know, it's crazy stuff. So I wrote, had somebody write on one of my videos. I think the one that I made when I was in the laundry room and it was uh, International Women's Day or something like that. And I guess it must be an FTF that I rubbed the wrong way. Um, I tend to do that because they know I see right through them. And it's just like, they can't BS me. I see right through them. I know what a woman is. First of all, I am one. And second of all, and I'm not, I'm, I'm ashamed of the fact that I have been with biological females from the age of 13. 
till the age of let's say when I started going out with trans women, probably like gosh, forty something. I can't really think, but night and day, night and day. There is just no comparison. There isn't. There's just like see right through them. Counterfeit, nothing like the original. So this person writes, you found that the transition has made you happy. This to them, everything's about happiness. And you know, we're not here to chase happiness because you'll never find it. You have moments of joy in life, moments of contentment. But as long as you're living in these flesh and as long as you're living for earth desires, you'll never really find happiness. It's, it's, that's a lie. That's a lie. It's they're fleeting moments and they're not based on real concrete things because that's not what we're here to do. So they go, and I'm happy for you. <laughs> it's like the typical line that trans people give detransitioners. However, trans people still exist. And most of us are far happier when we're allowed to transition, allowed to transition, far happier. How long does that happiness last? As many trans people that I've known, and I've known many hundreds, you know, that I've personally known because of my advocacy, because of what I used to do. Um, you said that trans women are trying to manipulate, quote unquote, and trying to be better than. Yeah, um, that's why they're trying to get into sports. That's why they they want to get into shelters and use locker rooms and and do all the things that they do, manipulate their way, because it's not good enough just to be themselves. No, they they have to be validated. That's that's the meat and potato for them, you know. That's how they get their their um, serotonin release and trying to be better than. I'm curious, who are they trying to manipulate? Um, women. I've talked to many trans widowers, women who have been married with men that all of a sudden decide they want the husbands decide that they want to venture into transition and um, see what happens. Watch the movie Transparent. I mean, they showed it clear as day exactly what takes place. Talk to a lot of women that have been afflicted by this with their husbands. They'll tell you. So I said the label trans is a word created for those who did not like the cards they were dealt. And basically that's it. People didn't like the cards that were dealt. They decide they want to be something else. They think they fit better in another role and they're going to go for it because there is no records. We're looking back 200 years ago. If there would have been that there were people that were trying to take their lives because of not feeling a line in their bodies, children, even adults, very few cases in those cases were actually intersexual cases. But this phenomenon we're seeing now? No. So there is no objective findings or tests to prove dysphoria. Zero. None. It's all word of mouth. It's all subjective reporting. Fill out a form. There's no blood work. There's nothing that could give you to tell you, yes, without a shadow of a doubt, you have gender dysphoria because it's bogus. All subjective and anecdotal. Women are being manipulated by men believing they are women. They equals MTFs. I can I can simplify it any more for them, you know. So it's uh it's really sad because the world's being turned upside down, totally upside down. We're allowing a group of people to literally just destroy something that's been true for ages, boy, girl, mature, man, woman. It's part of life. Be fruitful and multiply. It doesn't take a rocket scientist. It doesn't, I mean, it's just, it's very basic. It doesn't need to be complicated. But the world 
is so busy with their materialism, with their technology, that they've allowed all of this to take place. They've literally sacrificed children. And this has been pushed by older advocates so that they can get their way. And basically the majority of these people are just full-time cross-dressers that enjoy it so much that they decided to go the next step. Because there's nothing, absolutely, absolutely nothing wrong with the body, but everything wrong with the thinking. It's a thinking disorder. And the more I research and the more I see, the more it makes sense. All right, guys, that's all for tonight. I am going to, how long have I been going here? 20 minutes. That's good enough. I just wanted to touch base on that. And, and, um, you know, let you know that I hope you all are getting right with your creator because the signs are there. They're very clear. And we're going to start seeing more and more things unfold. I don't know about you, but I don't want no gnawing at the teeth or burning, you know, eternally. I mean, I want to be up there with my king celebrating no more diseases, no more pains, only pure love, not the hijacked version of love in this new gospel that's being preached. Because like I said, Satan has altered this world completely. It's turned it upside down. Counterfeit world. Don't settle for that. Only settle for the real, authentic things that God has given us. All right, guys, I love you, but remember to always love yourselves too and each other. And most of all, our Heavenly Father, our Abba. Take care, guys. Bye-bye.